Let's look at some of the numbers of confirmed cases of coronavirus and examine how they illustrate exponential growth. Today is April 15th, 2020, and on March 21st, I was reading an article online in which a scientist was talking about the growth of the cases of the virus, and she said that the number of cases was doubling every six days. So I thought that was interesting, and I went and found a website called worldometers.info, which is keeping track of the number of confirmed cases for the world and also broken down by countries. And that night at 10 p.m., the number of cases reported there was 307,652. So I played around with my calculator and I figured out that the number of cases should go up to about 615,000 after six days if this scientist was right. And that would be on March 27th. Then I doubled it again to about 1.2 million. I did some rounding and that would happen six days later, which would be April 2nd. It would go up double again to 2.4 million by April 8th and then to about 5 million by April 14th. And what I did was every day I have gone on this website and I have recorded the amount of cases and I've also calculated the difference so that you can see the increase in new cases. I've done this every day and what's showing on these charts is date on the left, number of wolf cases as reported by that website in the middle, and the increase on the right. And I grouped the numbers by six days in order to be able to compare with what was predicted. At the end of the first six days, the number was supposed to have grown to 615,000 and the number reported at 10 p.m. I always take my readings at 10 p.m. because uh, the first day that I did it was at 10 p.m. The number reported is 596,000 and it's only a little short of the predicted 615,000. Now, some of these numbers, especially in the subtractions, could have small mistakes, but the, the numbers that I'm showing here are close enough so that we can get a feeling for what's happening. And as I moved to April 3rd, I stopped doing the exact subtractions and I started doing uh, simple subtractions with rounding. So you can see that's why all of those numbers end in 000. Now let's analyze what actually happened and compare it to what was predicted. At the end of the first six days, predicted 615,000, real 596,000, just a little, little short. At the end of the next six days, it was supposed to have gone up to 1.2 million, but it was just a little over 1 million. So the predicted fell a little further short of the real. And then after the next six day period, April 8th, it was supposed to have gone up to 2.4 million and was standing at about 1.5 million. So falling a lot further short. And finally, by April 14th, which is yesterday, the number was 2 million, but the prediction was 5 million. Now, why is this happening? Well, one good reason why it could be happening that should make us happy is that this could be the effect of the mitigation measures that have been taken by all of the countries to try to reduce the spread of the virus. If this is working, then that would be reflected by the real numbers falling so far short of the predicted numbers. Then I read another article yesterday where another scientist was pointing out that the number of confirmed cases has to be far short of the real numbers because there are so many people who might have the virus but who are unable to get tested. And that scientist was suggesting that 5% of the world population might already have had this virus. If that estimate is correct, then the numbers that are shown here on worldometers.info are actually only one, 170th the real numbers that are existing in the human population. Therefore, the number of people who have caught the virus is actually 170 times as big as the numbers that, of confirmed cases that are being reported. That could be good news because when you look at the death rates that are happening, if 
way more people are actually sick with the virus than we knew, then it means the percent of people who are dying from it would be a much smaller percentage. Then we look at the increase side of the chart and we can see what was happening that the first day it increased by almost 30,000, then it jumped up to increase by 40,000 the next day. We see numbers in the 40,000s jumping up to the 60,000s, a little dip here, but up into the 70,000s. And then we have these days, April 3rd and April 4th, where 82,000 increase and 103,000 increase were reported. And then it drops down to 71,000, 72,000, back into the 80s and then into the 70s again. And what this suggests to me is we could be seeing a plateau. So the next thing to look at is how happy should we be to see that plateau? For sure, the rising phase that we were seeing before the plateau is very bad and the plateau is a big improvement on that. But should we be happy with the sort of numbers we're getting on the plateau? I'll erase and then I'll draw a little graph so that I can talk about that. Okay, so what we have here is a, a simple graph that shows number of deaths per day. And I put a little line here showing 6,000 deaths because that's the amount that were reported yesterday on the same website. So if we have a plateau, it is good news because it means that that rising phase has at least temporarily stopped. But we don't want a plateau where 6,000 people are dying every day. This is a situation where even one death is too many if it happens in your own family. So what we want is for something to happen that makes this plateau start to fall so that we have a falling phase. And one way that could happen is if there were a vaccine developed, we could have the number of deaths crash down to almost zero very quickly if there was a vaccine and if it became readily available. So that's one way that this can improve. Other things that could happen are the second wave that people talk about, and that would not be the best news. We could also have the number of deaths start to fall and then plateau again, but at a lower, uh, a lower death rate, which would be better news than what we have now. So the only thing we can do is wait and see. And what I intend to do is I'm going to keep on writing down these numbers every day but I'm also going to start keeping track of the number of deaths that are being uh, reported. And I'm going to come back and to this again, I'm going to draw the graph, but I'm going to draw the graph further into the future. We have to wait until we have enough data to do that. And then we can see what shape this graph is going to take. 